Go. Here we go. Come on, let me oh, hear it. Let's try this one more time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the boys yeah. of Hollow Front. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Fellas, if you could, thank you for joining us, by the way. If you could, could you guys uh yeah, kind we got me, Tyler, we got Devin. What's going on? That's what I was gonna say. Introduce yourself. Uh no. I know you're on tour right now. Let us know whereabouts in the world you are and uh plug or promote anything you'd like. Uh, we are in California right now on an off day. We're playing Pomona, California tomorrow. Uh, we're on tour with Fit for a King, uh, Silent Planet, and a band from Seattle called Avoid. Avoid kicks ass. Are you guys at, at Glass um, Glass House guess, tomorrow? Yeah, we're playing at Glass House tomorrow, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there pretty frequently. That should be a fun one. Uh, Tyler, I know that you've had uh, some health stuff going on right now, man. How have you been feeling lately? I'm good. Yeah, I had a kidney stone in uh, what the third show. Yeah, drinking True. too many cokes. Yeah, yeah, that's what they say. But that's not. That's not <laughs> everything. That's not all. Oh, alarms going off. And then if I don't know what happened. did I see correct that uh, you, they played? You guys played without you on vocals. So I imagine Dakota pretty much like took over for that show. Is that that probably doesn't happen very often? Was there like a different style of rehearsal that's that had to go down? That's the, no. They just had to wing it because it was like six hours before the show. Yeah. Um, that's the first show I've ever missed as uh, as Hall Front. Um, I don't like doing that. I was trying to get out of the hospital to go back to play the show, but they wouldn't let me out. And uh, uh, Benny from Avoid actually uh, came up and kind of filled in, kind of threw his. Uh, he knew some of the songs, so he uh, did his best and uh, made it work. Yeah, it was it was cool. He like freestyled. He like he knew some cues, which was cool, but. Benny's just got a really like hype personality, so he just basically went crazy on stage, and every everyone in the crowd was cool about it. I so. passed my stone and uh, was <laughs> able to return the next day to perform. Yeah, awesome. I'm pretty much at a hundred percent now. Excellent, excellent. Uh, before we play uh, the the price of dreaming, what do you guys normally do on a day off on the road? Like, assuming you weren't here doing this, what would you be doing? Would you be at the movies? Uh, what would you be doing on a day off? Yeah, we, we we went and saw Batman. Actually, we had a day off a couple of days ago. We went and saw Batman. It hung out at the mall with like a, we went to a mall with like a like a theater in it, so that because not everybody wanted to go to the movies, so we you know half the band or half the crew and did their own thing, and then me, Devin, and Dakota went and watched the Batman. But today we got a hotel in Rancho Cucamonga, and uh, we got some um, we ate at a Mexican food truck. Uh, we're going to do some laundry, um, <laughs> maybe, maybe get in a hot tub at this, yeah. at this hotel. Um, if the schedule yeah. allows, if the schedule allows. Shopping. <laughs> Hell yeah. That sounds yeah. like. Yeah. I mean, really on days off, it just depends. You know, most of the times we try to do laundry or anything, try to be productive, but, uh, sometimes, uh, we just do nothing, which is almost better. Yeah. We need that. So cool. Oh, I know for sure. We'll go ahead and play uh, The Price of Dreaming. Before we do, though, can you guys tell us what this song means to you and or is about and why it was written? Um, I can start. We can both, we can, we'll both say our piece because I'm sure it has a little different meaning to both of us. Um, for me, The Price of Dreaming is um, it's about them, the sacrifices that you have to make. You know, it's, it's not always everyone ex assumes that, you know, just because you're touring with these bigger bands that it's all like perfect and you know, but you have things at home that you left behind. I have kids, so leaving my kids behind and kind of to, to focus on my dream, you know, it's sometimes it's it's a sacrifice that has to be made and it's not it's not ideal, but it's better than like, I guess, uh, going through life and, um, you know, wishing that you'd um, done the things that you wanted to do instead of just dreaming about it. I can dig it. Yeah, I guess for me, like, same, it kind of goes along with what Tyler said. Like, but I, I don't have kids. Um, I, I'm young, so I, I do not have kids. But basically, the biggest thing that hits home for me about this song is, you know, the the strides that we're willing to make to turn a dream into a reality, and a lot of what comes along with that is is very hard, whether it be financially 
relationally, mentally. With, mentally, and it's you know it's a it's a big ball game, you know, and, and it's, you're always taking a risk. But as long as you're you know following your dreams and you're doing what you love, you know, there's there's not much more that you can do because that's basically the meaning of life is you know following your dreams and making a reality out of it. You got to follow so, those dreams, man. Yeah. You got to. Otherwise, you're always just left wondering what if. And it's not cool to be wondering what, what if. Yeah. yeah. So the price exactly. of dreaming. Here we go. Who does all your guys' uh, audio production? What do you, so, sorry, we, we muted it. So we, um, what, oh, did we, oh, I meant the video too. Oh, there we go. All right, we're back. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, say that again. Who does? Who do you guys go to do to do all your uh, recordings? Like, who's your producer that you go to? Um, well, th we've always uh, worked with our guitar player Lee for the most part, but this uh, this was the first album that we've done with a major label. So we went to uh, Pennsylvania and we worked with uh, Atrium Audio, which is Carson and Grant. They do like uh, August Burns Red. They did the New Era album, Monster Flames. like Mazda Flames. Um, they've done a lot of stuff over the years. Um, that was uh, just something new we wanted to try, you know, go somewhere else and kind of see what, what kind of sound we could pull out um, working with somebody else. Uh, Enzo is actually my co-host. On Mondays, we have different people fill in as co-hosts to kind of like give it like a freshness. He's in a band called From Zero to Hero. Enzo, do you have any questions for the fellas? Yeah, dude. Hey, how's the road so far, man? How's all that treating you, dude, besides everything else? It's good, man. Uh, the shows are doing really well. We're we're having a good time. I mean, uh, besides the fact that I went to the hospital, that that other than that, uh, is it uh, it's been pretty fun. Yeah, it's been a really good tour so far. So have a long way to go. Yeah, man. Yeah. I think this. Time. I think this. Uh, this loose threads reimagined version is my favorite thing in your guys' catalog. What it, what is it like to decide as a band? You know what? Let's go back and take some of our best jams and completely do them differently. Like what was the the process behind the actual reimagining? I mean, we did that. We did it with Still Life, a song off our EP from 2018. Um, I just like, I like those kind of like stripped down versions of songs like Wage War has done them. Who else? Um, There's a lot of bands that have done them. I just can't think of them. Wage War is like a, probably a pretty good, uh, yeah. probably the best probably example. The best example. Um, and the response too from people. Are, are you yeah, able? Are you able to play these different. versions ever at the shows, or do you kind of just stick to the originals? Yeah, we. Yeah, no. I mean, it's not really meant for that. I mean, maybe somewhere down the line we might do like an acoustic set or something. But it's just not. It's not good for a live show when you got every other band's hype as fuck. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's like trying to maybe if we were headlining. Yeah, maybe for headlining and maybe you know it's like an interlude or something, but. Cool. To me, it's those songs aren't really meant to be played live. They're just kind of meant to enjoy. Yeah, enjoy listening to. Um, yeah, I don't even think we've ever played those songs. Um, no worries. Besides, like while we were doing like the filming of the videos, like that's about pretty much it. After this, we're gonna if we'll you... do one. I think we'll do one for the price of dreaming too. I just I don't I don't know exactly if we're going to, but. Uh, Sure. We, we've talked about I, and we just like doing them at least once an album it's fun you can do a lot of different creative stuff like yeah it is with fun the loose threads uh with the loose threads reimagine track like i was able to just kind of like chill and just kind of groove and shuffle you know what i mean so <clears throat> it's nice to kind of have a little bit of a change of pace and the response from our fans was really cool so yeah i'm sure like in the future like we would like to do an acoustic set or do something you know a like, bit different. Like Fipper King is doing like a VIP right now where they're doing like an acoustic set for their VIP. Maybe that's something that maybe that's something we'll explore in the future when we're headlining and have our own VIPs. Um but yeah, for live shows, like it would just it would just kill the energy to go from playing, you know, really high stuff it. to go into like an acoustic song. Yeah. I get it. Uh so after we play this, if you guys are down to hang for a little bit, we're gonna uh We'll review a couple bands together. It could be any genre from anywhere in the entire world. Most of the time, we haven't even heard these songs. And if you're down right now, I want to do a little trivia. 
If you know the answer to the trivia, it's just a generic question. This one is particularly about something that scares people. If you know the answer, let me know. And if you get it right, I'll give you guys a wheel spin, which you could win a prize or more likely you're probably going to torture me like I have to eat hot sauce or something crazy like that. But uh, your trivia question is... Out of all the phobias in the world, what is the most common phobia? Spiders. Mother. Well, you didn't even, you didn't even that call is me. correct. That is correct. Yeah, yeah. Arachnophobia. Arachnophobia yeah, yeah. is correct. Well That's done. The first time he's ever been right about it. Let's yeah. see. We'll see what it lands on. You could possibly win a T-shirt. I have no idea how I'd get it to you if you did, but uh. We'll figure it out, but more than likely it'll land on something crazy. I'll check in a second to see what the wheel lands on. All I did right, not think you guys were going to get that, man. We're, Good we're, job. We're waiting with bated breath. <laughs> I got to take a shot. Okay. Fair enough. I don't know why. Hello. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, it was being weird. Sorry about Sorry, that. Sorry, Tyler had a boomer moment. Yeah, I'm not very good with technology. I thought you were just that pissed that it didn't land on the shirt, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, we'll do. Let me cue up a song from uh, somebody that has submitted to us. But if you guys had, when you're on the road, let's say s somebody has the remote. Tyler, you have the remote, and it's time to pick pick a Netflix show. What is one show that you guys can all agree on? Because I'm gonna make my next trivia question about that. Yeah, I mean, last two we watched, we all watched Squid Games. Okay, I can definitely, I can definitely find that, some. That, usually, we don't really watch. I mean, we have a TV in here, but usually, everyone watches their own shit separately. I would put on The Office if it was me, just because that's just my comfort show. Hell yeah! So you say you, you definitely know wrong. more. You know more about The Office than probably Squid Game. Oh yeah. yeah okay, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll look up some Office trivia. I definitely got a bunch of those. This is Black oh, yeah, Gold. Okay, yeah, I can do that better. I've watched that seven times. Again, we have no idea what this band sounds like, what genre they are. Let's see if we dig them now. What band? Black if... Gold. Black Gold. <laughs> kind of cool. Yeah. Black Gold. All right, so yeah, I mean, I definitely get Hollywood Undead vibes, but they got their own like they got their own uh, thing going on. It's dope. I think it's bouncy too. Yeah, it's not really something I probably would listen to on my own just because I don't, I, I don't know. I listen to more shit that I listened to when I was a kid than anything. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I like their, like, nicknames and, like, their masks and, like, they have, like, it's got that very, like, um, like, like you said, Hollywood Undead, like, Slipknot kind of, uh, like, you know, like, we're having everyone has their own personalized masks. Like, Hollywood Undead goes Cali. Yeah, yeah, it was very, mm -hmm. yeah, I liked, uh, I liked them riding their bikes like they were fucking, you know, on the, on the West Coast, which it looked like they were. Um, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Living here in California, I live in the high how many, desert. How many views they got? Uh, it's well, 6,000 in two days. It's pretty good. And they only have 50 subscribers. That's good. That's good. That's very so, good. Yeah, they're doing great. So it's a brand yeah. new song. What yeah, a brand new one. Black Gold. And that's the, ba that's the band, right, that's Black it. Gold. Uh, okay, so your Is office... It's just like a request and... Yeah, so we do this Monday through like Thursday. We Monday do this uh, Monday through Thursday, and every morning we just say, hey, drop your guys' links. And as people tell people about the show, they just drop links, and it could be any genre anywhere around the world. And if we like it, we add it to a poll right here. At the very end, chat gets to vote, and we see who gets one more song. Because you guys are our guests, you're automatically on the poll and probably have a really good shot of winning it. Guests usually tend to be favored a little more. But if you end up winning, you guys probably yeah, won't probably be here when that happens. Band. But uh, <laughs> we'll play we'll play another <laughs> song of yours. But your office trivia. Here we go. Oh. Oh. All right, what here we is go. the name of the annual employee awards night on the show? The Dundies. That is correct. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. The Dundies. The Dundies. The Dundies. The Dundies. My $200 plasma screen TV. <laughs> Dundee. Let's see if it lands on something crazy. I think we're, it's... We're I, two for two right now. Where's my t-shirt? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my mother... Uh, what does that mean? It means exactly what you think. I have to take this yes. Twinkie. What did I win? What did I win? Oh, he's got to eat a hot sauce Twinkie. Oh wow! So yeah, if, if you don't crazy. win a prize, it, it's torture for me. It's uh, just what we do. But um, fellas, one is. I prefer this over the T-shirt. What did I? Win? <laughs>
Uh, what was the <laughs> take a shot? What was the what was the one we won before? Take a shot. What was that mean? That I took a shot. I had to take a shot. But you you're welcome oh, to join. Yeah. Now this this is this is a weed show. Is anybody in the band 420 friendly? Smoke yeah, weed. Absolutely. Every day. I smoke weed every single fucking day. I don't smoke anymore. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Just gotta get that out everybody of the way. Everybody in the band. Everybody in the band is uh, cannabis take partaker. Yeah, we're all stoners. Yeah. So if so if somebody was to bring you guys a present, <laughs> so so if like a, a fan comes to the show and they bring you a present, it, it, a good advice would be go ahead and bring you like a fat sack or something for the road. That'd be well. Yeah, I I, I take a I, I take a quick because I'm kind of like a weed connoisseur, so I'm gonna sniff it. I'm gonna look at it. I'm gonna make sure it's not like dirty. You're gonna lick it a little. I'm gonna lick it yeah. a little. But <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm gonna make sure that it's like good to smoke. But yeah. You know, I, that, honestly, that... I don't. People always try to give me weed to smoke or give me alcohol to drink, and I don't like drinking alcohol because of reasons. And uh, I don't smoke because of for your for singing reasons. But he eats a lot of edibles. I eat edibles at least. That's cool. I, I eat edibles ed every day. <laughs> I haven't eaten none today yet, but I'm gonna soon. It's coming. Uh, what is one last song that you would like us to play? Anything in your entire catalog, but we absolutely have to hear it. Comatose. comatose comatose because it's like our price of dreaming just came out but comatose is like our newer it's the next newest single that'd be a good one cool comatose it is and i'm gonna get this twinkie ready to go this is ghost yeah. chili and ghost pepper hot sauce all right fellas we got time for two more questions i'm gonna let enzo ask one and i'll ask one my question is can you tell me the awesome. worst gig story you've ever had Everything went wrong at this show. Can you go into detail? Like as Hollow Front or just in general? <laughs> I guess it could be if, if it was a previous project before Hollow Front. Whatever the well, worst I'll one say is. If I have to pick one, uh, Hollow Front's very first show was god awful. I'm the only original member, so Devin wasn't there, but uh, I uh, it was uh, very first show. We were opening actually for Dakota's old band, uh, they were headlining. And we were playing with them at some rinky dink bar, you know, uh, bat, you know, it was just a, a dive bar. And uh, we were opening and we couldn't get our MacBook to work, like for our backtracks and stuff. So we were like, we started the show like 30 minutes late. Oh man, it was, it was so embarrassing. And we just, we were just bad. We just weren't a good band at the time. You know, it was, you know, it was our very first show, like, so much was going wrong and it was like nobody was there really you know it was just uh, oh. that for me that's the worst show hollow friends ever played uh even though we've had we've had bad, other bad shows but um that's the worst one i don't know what about you what's the worst gig so i'd say that loft show the oh show. yeah that was a bad one so basically <laughs> to start off like i was having problems with my gear which was like and all, that already sucked like my snare was tuned like fucking five octaves lower than what i normally tune it to so that bummed me out but then we had a so the sound guy at the venue he was struggling with some stuff at first like even like the headliner of that show they had to do their like walkout intro like three times oh yeah it was a that was a bummer but he goes to walk behind the kit and try to fix something and he just stumbles all over so at that time i had a mixer that i would use for like backtracks yeah and we were very primitive that I would have through, my, through my ears we didn't have like the shit that we had yeah. now um but he like unplugged all of it because it yeah. was on like a stand <laughs> and shit and it's like he ripped out all the cables i kept playing and he ends up plugging it back in and then it ended at the part of the song that it was pulled out on. So yeah, I, and, was, then, and then I told him to turn it. It was just a huge shit show. It yeah, like, that, that actually that sound guy like he got like fired like publicly in front of everyone. It was like a huge like blowout. They behind, it wasn't like out in front of the crowd. It was like in the backstage, and they they at the they same show at the same show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. tell you a really embarrassing moment too from the last tour. Wow, I forgot where it was. Where I Minneapolis, so yeah, in Minneapolis on the We Car tour. So, and when we played "Don't Fall Asleep," at the end, there's like big open hits, and I would do like a little drum solo type thing. But 
I was just like, I got, like, I was daydreaming. Yeah, you discombobulated. And I was discombobulated. And I totally went into it. Too like, early. the solo way too early. So while the backing tracks are playing... I'm like, everyone's looking at me like, what are you doing? I turned around and looked at him and went, nope. (laughs) Is that, no, dude. It's not right. (laughs) But we didn't really do anything. Just had to let him go through it. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Yeah. No. Yeah. Hell yeah! So yeah, that that those are our worst gigs that we could think of at the moment. There's some good stories right there, Enzo. What's your what's your last question oh, yeah. for him? Hey, hey, out of all the venues that you guys have been playing at, you know, what's your absolute favorite, man? It's the absolute favorite. That's just the tits to you guys. Right? Palladium Cheers. Uh, in Worcester, Massachusetts, that would be Devon's, and at the Palladium, um, it's a it's a historical venue, man. And plus, like Kill Switch has like a really uh, really big like dvd that they that they filmed there which was pretty cool um mine i think would be on the last tour would be the house of blues in orlando um it was just such a cool area it's like downtown disney which is like their disney springs is what they call it now it's like where they have like all their disney shops and restaurants and like it's just like smack dab in the middle of that whereas like all the other venues are kind of like in the middle of cities and like that one was just kind of like it's its own like area and it was super cool because after we played we weren't on that tour. It was very strict with COVID rules. We couldn't we couldn't really go and, and hang out with the, at the merch table. We couldn't really hang out with the other bands, at, at least in the green rooms and stuff. We didn't have a green room, so we we just had the time to walk around and like scope out shops. And I bought some stuff for my kids, and it was bought he bought a hat. And so yeah, I think that one was for me. And I think that that night was just super fun. Like it was, it was a super fun night. Um, Florida is always cool, especially, you know, if it's not super hot and humid, it's, it's, it's nice there, you know? Yeah. I think that, that for me, that, that would be mine. Cool. Hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah, bro. That's awesome. Well, fellas, we appreciate you spending some time out of your day. We know you're super busy on the road, safe travels, the rest of the tour. We're glad you're feeling a little bit better, Tyler. Can't wait to, I assume there's a video coming for comatose at some point. Um, we'll be on the oh, lookout. We already dropped it. Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I was unaware. I should have played um, the video. Another single coming out called Heritage that would come out on April 13th, um, and then we have our album, uh, The Price of Dreaming, comes out May 27th. May oh, yeah. 27th, ladies and gentlemen, the boys in Hollow Front. Thank you, fellas. Hell yeah. Stay safe out there, and we appreciate you so much, man. Go get some food. Hell yeah, grub up. Oh, enjoy. Yeah. Have a good night, okay? Enjoy the glass hey, house too, tomorrow. Man. Stay safe. Hey. Cheers. Thank you guys again.